طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد We continue إن شاء الله تعالى The uh, topic of uh, Imam Sufyan al-Thawri And uh, this is the zuhd according to Imam Sufyan Al-Zuhd according to Imam Sufyan al-Thawri uh, We have already mentioned something important and there's a lot of things that have been done, Jazakallah khair, in the name of the Sharia. When it does not have a source into the Salaf, which is, as you're seeing, one of the condition to be among the Salaf is the three first generation, three third generation following completely and fully the son of the Prophet Sallallahu as Al Imam Sufyan, he said about Al Athar. لا علم إلا بالأثر. There is no knowledge or evidence only if it has a proof from the source of the Sharia. However, uh, I was talking earlier about, for example, the action of wheeling. You know, when you make that action as a worship, then the the question is, what is the evidence? How can I worship Allah? with an action that was not justified and validated by Allah. You understand? So these are very important in the path of the believer. Yeah? Might be for certain people, it's very, it has a good effect. It has a very positive effect. For some people, it's really, you know, it's, it's really soft in their heart. But if someone soft is his heart or her heart, can I say then it's good because it's softened my heart? No. If it's softened my heart and it's not from the way of the Prophet ﷺ, then I need to struggle to have that thing not soften my heart anymore because I need the seeking, the softening of the heart from an authentic way of the Prophet ﷺ. What is the zuhd? What is the zuhd? The zuhd, as I have said earlier in the beginning of the class, is the renunciation of the dunya to renounce to the uh, worldly life. But how? How? Because someone, for example, there's the Zuhad who don't eat at all. So the Zuhad is like, you know, to be fasting the whole time or fasting, I mean fasting the whole time. So he considered the Zuhad, the less food uh, one eats, that's a Zuhad. But that's not how we should think of the Zuhad. The Zod is not like to wear, you know, uh, wear, you know, kind of old clothes, or worn out clothes, um, you know, with a lot of patches, and that's not the Zod. Rather. So, what is the Zod according to Imam Sufyan al Thawri, Rahimahullah? First, he's saying, he gives us here the author, قال الزهد هو القدرة الهائلة على إباء العبودية والخنوع لأعظم محبوب للإنسان وهو الماء. الزهد is to have that strong ability, power on worshiping Allah سبحانه وتعالى and not to be distracted or fall into uh, let's say the uh, distraction, the attraction of uh, the thing, the dearest thing to the heart of every human being, which is the money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, we said this is natural. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ He really loves too much. You know, he has a very strong love to the, to the money. When we say money, it's not uh, the dollars. Yeah? What the a dollar allow you to get? Everything, I mean, according to Sahih, so that's the money. So any type of desires in the dunya is possible if someone have enough the dollars. So they were the dollars he loved for the sake of what they allowed them to to have. However, this is the zuhd, the true meaning of the zuhd according to the uh, scholars. Um, Al Imam Ibn Al Jawzi he mentioned you know about the wrong way of the zuhd because some people 
they approach the zuhud without knowledge. So they mimicking other people by, you know, wearing uh, heavy clothes, thick clothes out of wool, um, looking, you know, people zahid, which is mean like looking kind of poor, um, renouncing to the dunya, not caring about the dunya, um, disheveled and calm, uh, beard not uh, straightened, uh, the people they don't eat, so that's the zuhd, you know. And remember, Rujozi said one time was someone was so thirsty, but he believed from the zuhd is just to be fasting the whole time. And he, he subhanallah, he, he fell in conscience, so they want to help him leading him someone against you know the wall and then give him to drink so when they give him to drink subhanallah they heard subhanallah is like his his uh, stomach burning out of dryness he died he died on the spot so that's not zod that's not zod someone else from the zod he felt like he becoming light you know, light. And why he lied? Because he, they told him the taqwa make you to feel light. And light to the point like, you know, the gravity doesn't affect him. <laughs> this is a true story that he remember when Rujawzi mentioned it. But is, this is in the mind of the person. Because from the Zod, he feel like he became like, you know, now he has karamet, karamet like, you know. So the imam in Baghdad, he entered, and the, the salat, you know, they called for the salat for the ikham. So this person is on the corner of the masjid holding on the, on, the, on the mat, on the corner. He told them, why you don't pray? He said, uh, yeah, imam, I'm concerned if I leave this corner, I might fly. <laughs> <laughs> because he feel like from the zuhd and taqwa that he is uh, defying the gravity. So Imam told him, don't, don't, don't worry, come. If you fly, I will knock you down with my shoes. You will fall down, inshallah. <laughs> so this is how <laughs> the, <laughs> the Kara ibn al-Jawzi in one of his books. So it's like, if you feel like flying, this is the way of the sunnah, how we bring you back, inshallah. <laughs> then the zuhud, it's not, it's not a form, it's not an appearance. A zuhud is a true worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we go back to our salaf to teach us what is the meaning of the zuhud. Qal walaysa min az is not from the zuhd, which is renounce, you know, renounce the dunya, the love of dunya from the heart, to just stop eating the good food. Qal and the good, you know, things that the drinks, wala an yada an nafisa min al thiyab, is not, for example, from zuhd to not wear something like valuable, nice, looking nice. That's not Zod. For example, someone he said, uh, offer him or you buy something nice. He said, yeah, he, you are Zed. You're not Zed. You, this is, for example, expensive. He said, but I like to wear something nice. Tell them, no, the Zod will not allow you. No, that's not the Zod. So the Zod is not to touch your appearance. The appearance, if you want to be good looking, some, because the Prophet, وسلم, when he was uh, talking about arrogance, so one of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, one of us loves to look good, to dress nice. He said, Allahun jameelun yuhibbul jameel. Allah is beautiful, loves the beauty. That's not arrogance. Arrogance will belittle people and deny the truth. That's the arrogance. Look down to people and you think your opinion is the, the opinion. Any other opinion is rejected. That's arrogance. The arrogance is not to dress nice. That's what the Prophet saw said. So again, I'm trying to show you that the, the saying that we're studying, it always has a root. But you see it, how it's implemented. And that is the importance of studying the Salaf. 
قال ولا أن يتجنب أرفها المراكب and also no, is not from the zuhud to avoid the good transportation rather <coughs> so you can have the most expensive clothes with the most expensive car and you still that but to have the most expensive car to show off that's the problem to have the most expensive car or clothes and uh, you know someone who's not he barely making uh, feeding his family that's we have a problem to have this most expensive thing and someone ignoring paying his zakat that is a violation so we're talking about the balance so don't take something you say oh this is very luxurious and nice so Zed, I cannot get this. I said, wait, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it halal for you. If you can afford it while you're keeping your balance and you're doing for observing all your duties, it's halal. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ Rather. قَالَ وَمَنْ بَالَغَ فِي الزُّهْدِ إِنَّمَا الزُّهْدُ أَنْ تَكُونَ بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ فِي مَا أَعْطَاكِ وَبِكَامِلِ الرِّضَى فِي مَا مَنَعَكِ Zuhud, what it means is to observe Allah's obedience in what Allah gave you and to have the contentment toward what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give you. You're asking for something and you cannot get it. So you be grateful to Allah and contented. You, you are pleased with that situation. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith, قال اللهم ارزقني حبك وحب من يحب وحب كل عمل يقربني إلى حب والله grant me and give me the bliss and the favor of your love and the love of those you love and the love of the actions that lead me to your love and now look at this beautiful this is the definition of this zuhd is from this hadith that I'm, I'm narrating I'm said uh, you know Citing now. قال اللهم واجعل لي فيما فيما أحب طاعة لك في واجعل لي فيما أحب طاعة لك فيما تحب. Oh Allah, and whatever you gave me from things, things that I love, make me Allah to use them in what you love. Someone Allah subhanahu gifted with uh, someone he wants to love to uh, buy cars. Alhamdulillah, that's fine. Taib, if someone will be given such good transportation, he said, Yeah Allah, this is hadith of the Prophet. Yeah Allah, help me to use it in what you love. Allah loves that you drive to the masjid. You use it to drive to the masjid. Allahumma fui ma ataitini ma uhib. فسخلي فسخره لي فيما تحب اللهم وما زويت عني مما أحب فاجعله فراغا لي فيما تحب أو كما قال يا الله إن وتبر I like and you didn't give it to me so make that time that I was going to invest if I had that thing make it يا الله that invested in your obedience that's the job so if Ya Allah, you give me things that I like, so Ya Allah, make those things to be for me, invest in them in what you love. So you see the zuhd is the managing of subhanAllah, everything you have halal in your hand, in the obedience of Allah, in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And whoever who get excessive in a zuhd, and turn away to al asbab. What are the asbab? Are the condition that you uh, lead you to to the result? For example, if you want to succeed in your study, you have to work and hard. You cannot say, you know, no, I should not succeed. I rely on Allah. The zuhd does not mean to be like someone like uh, lazy and uh, secluded, not being you know, uh, involved and working uh, into the society. That's nothing you have to do with the zone. Okay. Qila li Sufyan. 
ايكون الرجل زاهدا ويكون له المال can someone be zahid fully renounced to the dunya and have money it's like rich قال نعم he said yes ان كان اذا ابتلي صبر واذا اعطي شكر he said yes but when he has a trial he's tested in his money he should be patient and if Allah increases him in his wealth, he should be shaker, grateful. Also, another beautiful definition that he's given us. قال سفيان ليس الزهد في الدنيا بأكل الشجب ولبس الخشن وإنما الزهد قصر الأمل. What's the meaning of that? So, he did finding the true zod so they said the zod is not to eat things rough and to wear the thick and rough clothes that's not the zod like people they used to do it before because people they been they want to be called zohad zohad so it's like an appearance an appearance someone who cannot afford food who cannot afford or like they don't want to eat because that's what they believe in the zod so he said, that's not the Zod. The Zod is Qusr al-Amal. What did it mean, Qusr al-Amal? Qusr al-Amal is like you have in your mind that you can make your departure to the Akhirah at any moment. Don't make your plans like you're going to live forever. You might go tomorrow. Does not mean that you do not build, you do not buy, for example, a house, you do not project for your good career. You do all of that, but you are ready to go. So death should not be, you know, frightening the believer because death in it, the greatest of celebration meeting Allah. But as long as you are alive, you walking, you working hard. Why? Because you want to increase into your good action. Because excellence, as we said, for the believer is required. That's the ihsan. If you want to start, I mean, someone studying, uh, intending to have a degree, that's halal, right? Tai. Why should not have the best of the degrees and the best of the, or the highest of the great? Sharia. And the son of the Prophet ﷺ telling him, you have to do that. That's the ihsan. While studying and doing, you know, effort and knowing that someone that is going to able him to or her to have a great career. It does not mean that is going to be the purpose of life. And then which is going to steal away that taqwa and then the fear of death will be like the death it will be the most thing threatening that person no so qusr al-amal helps someone always to regulate his path why he has great objective in his life that will not reduce it or like eliminate it what so qusr al-amal it's to know that someone is able to die or ready to die so Qusr al-Amal, it become give you new vision of life. You might be someone, ex help someone to be uh, uh, has al-Qasd, so he has the right choice in what he needs. He will not be excessive. Uh, you like, for example, things from the dunya, take it, but don't be excessive. You want uh, a nice height, don't be excessive. Your family is enough for them, five rooms. Don't get a place with the 20 rooms. That's excessive. Qusr al-Amal help you to regulate your choice because you know that at any time you want to meet Allah, you're longing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And having that perspective that the dunya, tomorrow I'm going to do this, and after tomorrow I'm going to do this, is like that subhanAllah, if, if someone is excited, what tomorrow? And after tomorrow, what are you going to do? And then, uh, let's uh, plan, we should do this, we should take a trip, we, 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 you see? That's, drag someone, 
subhanallah, to be more attached to the dunya and distract on his akhirah. But when you have qusrul amal, the qusrul amal is regulated by the remembrance of death. كما قال النبي أكثر من هذه من لذة. Remember much the destroyer of of the desires that is going to regulate your path. That is going to keep the khushu in your salah. That is going to keep you eager always to worship Allah. If you take away qusr al-amal, someone will have like hope to live forever without knowing. Then his dua is going to be aligned with that hope. He's not going to be, Ya yeah, Allah, you know, save me from hellfire. He's going to say, Ya yeah, Allah, give me more money. Ya yeah, Allah, give me more khushu' in salat. It's not going to be that dua. It's going to be, Ya yeah, Allah, uh, uh, give me a long life. <laughs> you know. So the qusr al-amal is a regulator, and that is the healthy, the healthy zuhud as al-imam Sufyan rahimahullah ta'ala said. Qala wakiya. And you know Wakiya, he is the teacher of Imam al-Shafi'i. So, قَالَ وَرُؤْيَ سُفْيَانِ يَأْكُلُوا الطَّبَاهِجِ وَقِيلَ إِنِّي لَمْ أَنْهَكُمْ عَنِ الْأَكْلِ Which is mean like he's eating some good food. He said, قَال I didn't forbid you to eat, but I have said, look from where you eat. Which is mean, look at the halal. It's not the quantity or like the food itself that you need to deprive from it. To say this is tasty, you know, which is mean tasty like I have that desire, <laughs> um, which is like uh, awake in me the desire of the food. So I should deprive myself from eating such a food. I said that's not zuhd. That's not zuhd. I'd like give you the tongue to taste. <laughs> but eat the halal. وَارْتَحِلْ وَانْذُرْ عَلَى مَنْ تَدْخُلْ وَتَكَلَّمْ وَانْذُرْ كَيْفَ تَتَكَلَّمْ And the travel, and then when you're going to meet someone, check who you're going to meet. Which is mean, if you're going to get knowledge or sit with the person, you need to have that companion. Because it's going to be someone who helps you in the akhirah, or someone who is a wicked person who going to be like the majlis have a backbiting and gossiping. So look, uh, Imam Sufyan, it's helping us here is to have that reflection before the action. Before you eat, it's not the question how tasty is the food or not because he said, oh, this is, I need to be said. No, the source of the food. If it's good and halal, فطيب, كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم. If you travel, and you're going to, to meet or to learn, you have to reflect on whom you're going to see, whom you're going to sit with. So it's like the purification comes as a step before the action. You prepare the action, you plan for the action. And look what he said also. When you speak, just watch yourself how you speak. Because when you be mindful of yourself, if you try to listen to yourself, then you're going to choose your words. And that is going to help you uh, reduce from the vain talk. The vain talk. Because sometimes if you listen to yourself, you'll be questioning, why did I say that? And that it becomes like an auto muraqaba. Auto, like someone, it's like self-mindful uh, and self-accountability. And that's, that's really a path of the purification uh, of the soul needed for all of us. قَالَ وَكَيْفَ أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنِ الْأَكْلِ How can I forbid you to eat when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُ You know, Take your adornment at every musalla, at every masjid, and you leak the, the objective is always meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, another wisdom that he's saying about the zuhd, qala rajun lil-sufyan awsini. He said, give me wasiyya, uh, an advice 
فقال اعمل للدنيا بقدر بقائك بقائك فيها واعمل للاخره بقدر دوامك فيها او دوامك فيها act in the dunya you know based on how how long you want to live in it and work for your akhirah based on how long you're going to stay in it so if i put the factor the time how long you're going to stay in this dunya 100 years how long you're going to stay in the akhirah eternity so based your work to the dunya and to the akhirah based on the time how much you're going to if you're traveling tomorrow huh? say how long you're going to say say i'm going to have two days oh you need three suitcases no just small bag right if you're traveling you know visiting you know, someone is uh, he want to go visit his back home how long is it going to say two months Are you going to say small bag? No, no. Can you please help me get to the airport? I need, you know, a big car to take some gifts and things. So your luggage depends the size of the luggage or what you're going to need for your trip depends on how long you're going to stay. Right? So if the akhirah is for everlasting, for eternity, and the dunya is very short, How much provision are you going to prepare for each? And this is very, subhanAllah, rational, if you think. قَالَ خُذْ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا لِبَدَنِكَ وَمِنَ الْآخِرَةِ لِقَلْبِكَ So how can we implement what he said? Okay, telling me I, I work for my dunya based on the time that I'm going to live in it. How can I help myself? Can you explain to me? So in the next one he said, Take from the dunya what is give you strong as the body part. Food, sleeping, those healthy things that it keep you, you know, let's say healthy and someone active. And for your akhirah, keep your heart busy with it. Rather. Eating, food, you know, family, relationship, you know, that what the body needs, what that society as a social need. But the heart is for the akhirah. That's why when uh, Malik ibn Dinar was dying, they told him, what was the secret of your taqwa? He, st- he said, uh, rahimahullah, I stood by the gate of my heart for four years, four years, not letting enter to the heart anything that Allah is not pleased with. Now, if you think how profound is this saying, because anything that gets to your heart, then subhanAllah is like it, you become kind of put you in a prison. Because the violation starts, does not happen when one commits the sin. No, there's a background to that sin. There's that will that was kind of an engine to put the person to do the sin. But that will find its origin where? In the heart. So the heart likes that. So in a moment of ghafla, of heedlessness, that thing get to your heart without you knowing and subhanAllah, find the place and held like, you know, the place and, you know, get stuck there. And then start to, to work his work. Like Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, it's like a, a seed and the shaitan is water in it becomes bigger, bigger. It was an idea and then it turned to a strong will, then explode into action. For so if you, the believer, designate the heart for the akhirah, and whatever needed for the body, that's what he takes from the dunya. However, 
هير قال يا بكر خذ من الدنيا لبدنك ومن الآخرة لقلبك قال بشر يعني لبدنك ما لا بد منه ولقلبك أي اشغل قلبك بذكر الآخرة This is exactly what we have uh, explained However when we say keep your heart busy fully with the آخرة it does not conflict with the good objective that you have in your life it does not conflict for having a household, does not conflict with the loving of the dear one that you have, your spouse, your children, your parents, your siblings. It does not conflict. That actually a requirement of the Akhir. How can you, because the love of the Akhir is going to direct the love that you have to your family. You truly love if you have a child. You truly love your child? So what is the best thing that you can offer to your child? If you truly love your child. The Iman. Why? Because you want to be together in the Akhirah. The true success, when you be you and your parents and your siblings and your children, all together in paradise. That's the, the greatest of success. The loser. So the love that you have is going to be when you have your heart poured toward the akhirah is going to define the true love. It's not going to be whims. Right? It's not going to be based on whims or based of unconditional love. What's the meaning of unconditional love? Huh? You hear that, right? Do you hear that? Unconditional love? You know what it means? You know what it means, right? Taib, can we accept in Islam unconditional love? Said you are a mother, you love your kid. Uncondition you love your kid whatever happened. The kid, he became like totally off. He became atheist. Said mother, parents, unconditional love. So someone came out, they called from the closet. And then the parents, they said, yeah, unconditional love. <laughs> you understand? So sometimes, you know, things rhyme in our mind and around our kids. And people, they want to justify it when it really conflict and contradict our aqidah. So when we say there's no unconditional love, they said, look, poor kids, they have very tough parents. Said, no, those parents, they love their kids more than they do love them, those who claim the unconditional love. But this is, it helps us to, by understanding such a thing, so when your heart is busy with the akhirah, that's when you're going to understand and have to attain the true definition of the law. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to his way. Allahumma ihdina ila sawa' al-sabil wa sawa' al-sirat wa thabitna ala siratika al-mustaqim wa j'anna ya rabbana ala khuta salafina al-salihi ya rabb al-alameen. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الغفور الرحيم جزاكم الله خيرا and this is the end of the class we'll continue إن شاء الله تعالى with the, the other notes that we have and إن شاء الله brother Ibrahim will give you the code so you can have access to the uh, to the whole notes that we have here إن شاء الله تعالى any question أخي الأشياء الغالية من قال هي تبذير متبرير التبذير فيه نسبة when someone say for example waste don't buy things expensive because it's waste the waste 
is not defined by the price. The waste is defined by the relativity of the thing that you have. If you have $50 and you want to buy things with $100, you're going beyond your means. Right? But if someone can afford it, I mean, you know, people uh, among the uh, tabi'in, they have uh, diamonds. And the diamonds, they don't pay zakat in it. They don't pay. So at tabdiru, it's not related to the, uh, uh, the price of the item. If someone has money and he's paying his zakat and he's giving a sadaqa, when he wants to buy expensive cars, say, no, that's tabdir. That's not tabdir. He can't afford it. It's not tabdir. And that person can be that, as we said, that was saying of Imam Sufyan al Thawri, Al Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Wal Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak. All of them they say, say the same thing. Qala yakunu al Abdu lahu mal, rich. And Zahid, he said yes. So the question is in the heart. Question in the heart. Huh? If you can't afford it, brother, buy it, inshallah. And there's no waste. I mean, uh, if you have a uh, thing in the kids, they want, you know, things nice and a uh, lot of food, abundance of sambusa, get them, ya fi. <laughs> Let them have fun. Tell them waste. Or like that person, they get like uh, cheese. <laughs> and you pour it in the closet, you know, before they have those cheese that you can uh, save it in the closet. And then every week he said, oh, we have now, mashallah, we're going to eat cheese. So he get he pour it in the thing and everyone like just to smell. They smell and they pour it back, you know. We don't want to waste. That's stinginess. Allah <laughs> Jazakum